The opening lines of a book are so important. You really need to somehow charm your reader. If you can't get her attention in the first pages, you may have lost her. There has to be an ambiance. Tatiana de Rosne. You're listening to Writing Roots, brought to you by Aspen House Publishing. Welcome to Writing Roots. I'm Lee Hole. And I'm Lee Esses. And we are talking today about the novel red flag of a bad opening scene. If you don't start the book strong, it's really hard to convince someone to give it another chapter. We have talked about our favorite opening lines in the past, but what do you do and how do you recognize if your opening scene is not strong enough to keep a reader? When it comes to the beginning of a story, I have a fairly high tolerance. I'm 9 out of 10 probably going to continue, but if it doesn't get better within the first couple of chapters, then it's a no-go. I am at best a 6 out of 10. I'm much quicker to give up on books than you are, but it's rarely a sign that the book is going to get better. That is true, and I really should have learned my lesson by now. Readers can get burned by this very easily. And there are a lot of things that can cause an opening scene to be less than stellar. I think one of those is a habit that new authors especially have, opening their books with major cliches, like the character waking up to an alarm, or talking about the weather, or setting a very boring scene, to be honest. Here's the world history, so we're not even in a scene half the time. (laughs) And all of that can just be taken and thrown out the window because I'm not going to remember it. And that's another one of these ingredients that you'll see with a bad opening scene or page is they're starting with a flashback. And I've been guilty of this, of wanting to start strong and then pop back to give context for the strong start when I really should be moving forward forward instead. And a lot of that problem is because it can kind of start out boring. So in combination with getting the world history, starting with a flashback to explain backstory, it's usually boring because there's no reason for it. I don't care about the characters or the world yet. And if you absolutely want to make sure that you're doing your best to bore your reader with a bad opening page and scene as much as possible, it is a necessity to throw in a prologue. I kind of disagree on this one, depending on how well written the prologue is. Not every prologue is going to bore your readers, but it's an easy way to get there as far as if you're trying to bore your readers. Prologues really are double-edged swords. Some readers don't ever actually read prologues because prologues have a tendency to be boring and uninteresting and completely out of context because we don't know what's happening yet. So they just skip right over to chapter one. However, some books have prologues that should be chapter one and have a lot of things in there that are actually kind of important for the start of the story. We have done an episode on prologues and how to treat them and how to tell if it's a chapter one or not. You can go through our archives on the website if you're interested in finding that. But they have to be approached with caution. Make sure you're doing it intentionally and doing it well, because it's very easy to slide into that bad opening and especially a brand new author, get them to set the book aside and pick something more interesting up. This is by no means a comprehensive list of all of the things that can be bad about a start of a story. It's kind of a vague thing, but there are a lot of ways to start a story and start a story well. Just because you aren't starting with slamming your face against a wall action doesn't mean it's a bad start. You can have a slow start where the character is on their way to do something interesting. Or you're building anticipation for a thing, but make sure that pays off pretty quickly. The slow start isn't necessarily a bad start, so long as it gets interesting with whatever you're saying and pays off immediately. 
Another thing that isn't necessarily good or bad, it's more about execution, is an emotional start. Emotions can be tricky because you do want the reader to be invested in the character in the world as soon as possible, and emotions are what get you there. But they don't care about the character yet. They don't have the context to understand and really care. So you really have to be careful about what emotions you're trying to play on in an opening scene. A better way to approach this is to go with the universal emotions, the something that your reader will latch on to. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. We feel that 300 years later. The hyper-specific ones of my aunt was supposed to be there at my wedding can be very difficult because we don't know the relationship with the aunt. We don't know if you're dreading the wedding or loving it or whatever. There are a lot of complex emotions there that makes the reader feel like an outsider. And on top of that, the reader may not experience those emotions on their own. Maybe they don't have an aunt or an uncle. Maybe they don't want ever to get married and they're not planning to have that big wedding event where they'd invite family. Those kind of things limit how much they'll feel connected to a character if you're trying to play on those specific emotions in the beginning. However, there are some emotions that everyone has experienced at some point in time, usually loss of some kind. Having a weak opening can be a huge red flag in a lot of different ways, but often it's a matter of execution, like with picking an emotion or picking a prologue, making sure you execute it well. When I see it done poorly, it is a huge red flag for several different reasons. The biggest reason is that the beginning, that opening of a book, is supposed to be the best part. It's supposed to be the hook that gets the reader to keep going. A bad opening usually means that they published a first draft or an unpolished draft, or they didn't listen to their editor. Something kept them from removing the first three chapters of backstory that really aren't relevant. It also tells me that the author doesn't care about me in the least. They aren't respectful of my opinions or my time. They feel like they're entitled to wasting my time. Just because I purchased the book or because I picked up the book does not give the author the right to waste my time. Like we mentioned earlier, this rarely gets better. When it comes to fixing this problem, there are a couple of things that you can do to help make sure that you are creating a good beginning to your story. And I think the very first thing is get someone else's opinion. Have someone else read the beginning of your story and ask them what they think comes next. Ask them if they would be interested in continuing to read the story based on what happens in that first page and a half. Also, take a step back and think about where your story begins. We talk about that problem and solution. Where does the problem become real for your main character? Where do you hit these plot points? If you're starting 3,000 years prior to your main character's house burning down because the villain decided that they like magic more than your main character. Cool. Start with the house burning down. Another thing you can do is excluding prologues making sure that your main character is included. Whoever your main character is needs to be in the opening scene so you can establish them as the main character. You can sometimes start with a villain or one of the things that they're doing bad. I think a good example of this is crime dramas where you start out with the murder, but it still should be fairly clear very soon who your main character is. Ultimately, make sure something is happening. Make sure we are placed in a location. There is an easy understanding of the physical place that the characters are in and things are happening to them. So often when I see these bad openings, it's because I'm not anchored to a location. Here's all of their backstory. Here's all of this and that fluff. When really the character sitting on the train is more important. Put us somewhere. On the flip side, 
it's a location without a character that makes a bad opening. So if all you're doing is establishing the location, establishing the setting, establishing the weather, and giving us no character to care for, it's not an interesting one. So make sure you're combining those two very important elements, your characters and your setting, into making a good beginning. When you're reading through, pay attention to which parts you skim and which parts you actually read. Because those skimmed parts mean that it's information you already know and you just want to get on to the good part. And then consider cutting those out. If it's important, it'll bleed through in other places anyway. And I think the final way to avoid this, just like in our last episode is to read. Maybe go to your library or to a bookstore and just read the first page of a dozen books. Read that first line, that first couple of paragraphs, and see if that's something that you would be interested in continuing, and then ask yourself why. And I feel like getting a beta reader and reading lots on your own is going to be a solution to a lot of what we're talking about this month. That's because there's no better way to connect with your audience than to be a reader. So understand what you love about reading and what really hooks you, and then apply it to your own story. And when you're writing, especially those opening scenes, write selfishly. If you have a question or comment for our hosts or a topic you'd like us to cover, send us an email at writingroots at aspenhousepublishing.com or find us on Facebook by searching for Aspen House Publishing.